Welcome to So So Lounge. Today we are continuing with Simplicity 8133, which is the wrap skirt. I am making view C and this go round, which has the pocket and the contrasting waistband and ties. So if you've been wondering how to finish the front edge of your skirt and put in that hem and sew the darts and get moving forward on this project, stay tuned. Sews and Lounge is the place for beginners to learn to sew one pattern at a time. Be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. And if you've got a question, leave it in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Now we have our skirt front ready to go. The pocket is on there. We have both of our pieces. These are both the front panels. The back panel has the darts in it, so or has the darts marked on it. So we're going to put that piece over to the side for now. And we are going to be starting with pattern instruction number five. So this is the same on all views, even if you're not making the pocket you would still do step number five you kind of skip over steps two through four which is all about the pocket and just continue with step number five so make sure you have your instructions handy and you may want to grab the front panel of one of the pieces either the right or the left front it's fine whichever one you choose let's go in for a closer look we are starting with step number five, which is the same for all views, as I previously mentioned. First instruction is to press under the hem allowance on the front edge of the right front and the left front. We're going to form a narrow hem and we're going to tuck that raw edge into that fold to meet the crease, press it, and then we're going to baste it. Now we are not going to be doing hand basting because you don't have to. We can use our machine, which will be faster. And we are going to press the whole hem, not just once we've turned it under, because that's going to make it a lot neater. Now, you may be wondering, where are the instructions that tell me how much to press under the hem allowance? How do I know how much that should be? Well, if you go back to your pattern piece and you look closely, it says 5 8 inch hem allowed. This is the right front panel. So this is the side we're going to be finishing. It's for all sizes. So that's where that information is if you did not know you were supposed to look there. Once we finish with this front edge, we are going to be moving on to sew in the darts. And then we are going to sew all the sides together to get our skirt pretty much in order and prepped for the waistband. And we're do a little bit more pressing to just press open those seams before we go on to attaching the waistband, which is its own video. So let's go over to the ironing board. We are at the ironing board and we are going to be pressing the front edge of the right front and the left front to hem and finish that raw edge and tuck it under so it looks nice and neat. If you are wondering which side you need to put the hem on, it's the side that does not have a notch. So the outside that is going to be the seam and attached to the back of the skirt, it has a slight curve at the top, but then there's also a notch in it. So you want the side that does not have any kind of a notch in it. That is the side we are going to be pressing. Now, as I pointed out, on the pattern instruction, it actually says that there is a 5 8 inch hem allowance. So that is the amount we are going to fold over this front edge. I am going to be using my Dritz Easy Hem because there is a 5 8 inch mark. It makes this process a lot faster. If you don't have a Dritz Easy Hem, you can just use a regular hem gauge, set it to 5 8 of an inch, and then you're just going to fold your fabric over, measure until it's correct and then just press. So my iron is set to cotton and the steam is on high. This fabric is 100% cotton, which means that my iron is set correctly for the fiber content. This is just a novelty cotton. It's probably just a broadcloth from Joann's as mentioned in previous videos. I'm just going to fold this edge up to the 5 8 inch mark on my Dritz Easy Hem and I'm just going to press if you are using a Dritz Easy Hem, be careful. They do get very hot, um, especially when you're using steam. But this just makes this a faster process. You pull out this metal piece and then just press it by itself. 
and let that cool. I'm going to move down the rest of the hem, getting everything all lined up. Let's go in for a closer look. So this is just a close-up. I have my Dritz Easy Hem. You can see that there's some condensation there from the steam. And if you're using a Dritz Easy Hem, you just fold the fabric up to that line and then press and move down the whole front edge until you're finished, which is what I did on the right front panel. But I'm going to show you how to do this with a hem gauge. So I have my hem gauge or seam gauge set to 5 eighths of an inch, and I am just going to fold my fabric. So that's 5 eighths of an inch. And I'm just going to measure a little bit of it. There we go. And then I'm just going to grab my iron and press here in the middle to get that started. So let that cool, and then I'm just going to keep going down this edge of my fabric, matching up the 5 eighths. Let me scoot that over a little bit right there. This does take a little bit longer, but it's basically the exact same process. And then I'm going to press here. Go back over that original section. Let it cool. And then just finish that whole front edge using that technique. Once you have the hem pressed into place at 5 eighths of an inch, the next step is going to be to unfold it. And we are going to fold this raw edge down towards that crease that we just pressed in. And then we're going to fold it back over and press it in place. And this is going to finish this outside raw edge. And it's going to give us a nice little narrow hem down the front of the skirt. And this is really the easiest way to do this. So just fold it down and then fold it over. So once again, we are just folding it down to that crease that we just pressed. And then we're going to fold it over so that we're back at that 5 eighths inch original fold. And then just continue down the whole front. And then we're going to press it again. Now this is going to hold it in place. And then we're going to go baste it just to hold it until we finish the front edge of the skirt, which will be a little bit later. So add some steam. Now you can see you've got like this nice little finished edge. Continue down the entire front of both skirt panels. We are at the sewing machine and we are getting ready to do some basting. Make sure that your sewing machine is set to the longest stitch length for your make and model. On my Bernina, that is a five. And to get everything lined up, if you read the instructions, they want you to put the, they want you to hand baste next to this edge of the fold, which is closest towards the body of the skirt. Now, since this is the third time I've made this skirt, I followed these instructions for the first version, which was the long border print wrap skirt. And it's really a pain to have to go back in once you have sewn on top of acing stitches and try and pull them out when you have your regular stitch line there. So this time around, we are going to be putting the basting stitches along this top edge away from the body of the skirt. We're gonna put the basting on that side. And then when we come back later in the very last step of the pattern, we are going to put in the permanent stitch line close to this folded edge towards the inside body of the skirt. And then we don't have to worry about catching our basting stitches in our permanent stitch line. You can thank me later. So I'm gonna get everything lined up. I'm just going to be sewing on very, very close to that edge, which is gonna be about an eighth of an inch if you have a mark on your sewing machine. And I'm just gonna go down that front. Let's go in for a closer look. All right, so this is what I'm talking about earlier. We are going to baste along this edge, and then later when we come back, we are gonna stitch closer to this edge for our permanent stitch line that will make the basting a lot easier to remove than what the directions said is to put the basting line here and then put the stitch line here and then remove the basting. It's just easier to do it this way. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm getting this all lined up 
at about an eighth of an inch because between my needle and that little slot in the machine, it's an eighth of an inch. We just wanna be close to that edge just to hold this in place during the rest of the construction process since putting in the hem finish is the very last step. So just go in, do some quick basting, making sure everything stays lined up. what the end result will look like. Once you have finished basting in that hem, then those two pieces, the left front and the right front, we just put them out of the way for now. And we are going to be moving on to instruction number, let's find it, six which is all about sewing the darts. Now, if you did not mark your darts onto the back panel of your skirt, grab your pattern piece, put it back on and get those darts marked because we need to know where they are to pin them in place. Let's go in for a closer look. My darts are already marked. They're a little hard to see, so I'm gonna hold it up so you can get a better view. The bottom point is down here, and then you can see my dart lines going up to the top, and this is where the waistband will be. Now, to put in a dart, I like to start down here at the dot, at the very, very bottom. So make sure that you mark that in there, because it's kind of important. I have to find it again, there we go. So I put a pin at the bottom of that dart, and then I fold my dart in half, so that these two lines match up. And the way to know if you're doing that correctly is to put in a pin through one side and you should come out on the other. You can see like I'm a little bit below it. So to get it in the right spot, I'm just gonna pull open my fabric, put the pin in, and then I'm actually going to pin it in place. Let's go up a little bit higher and repeat that process. So I am putting it through there. I'm gonna grab it on the other side and come out on that line. You see that? And then I'm going to fold it and pin it back through. Now, when you sew your darts, you wanna sew them from the waistband down to the dot. So make sure that you have your pins going to the right side so that you can keep your everything lined up and keep your pins in while you stitch down the side of that dart. Now, one other thing to note is that when we get down to this bottom point, we're gonna stitch into the fold and then we're gonna leave those threads long to be able to tie a knot. Once you have one dart finished, go ahead and pin the other and then we'll head back to the sewing machine. We are back at the sewing machine and the first thing you need to do is change your stitch length back to your usual stitch length out of the basting stitch because we do not want to baste these darts in and then have to go back in and redo this step. So I am setting my machine to a length of two and a half and next we are going to get everything lined up. Now when you sew a dart you are not going to be lining it up with any specific width or line on your machine so it's not like it's at five eighths or a quarter of an inch or anything like that. You're going to line the needle up with the line that is marked for your dart on your garment. So on the skirt here, that's the mark one lineup. That is the line we're going to stitch down to put in this dart. Let's go in for a closer look. So I have the center of my needle lined up. I did go in and draw the line in green on top of the yellow line, so it's a little bit easier to see. And I am just going to get started stitching down that line. You do not need to backstitch at the top because that will be caught up in the waistband, so don't worry about that. And then I'm gonna remove each pin as I get to it and just stitch down that line for my dart. Now, 
And then as I'm coming down to this point, which is going to be right here, I'm just going to take that pin out and leave my finger where it should be and you can kind of still see it. We are going to sew on the actual crease and then come off of our skirt. So lift up your needle and you want to leave these tails long because we're going to go in and tie a knot. So you can see that is how the dart is. We've come off with the threads right here, which we're going to tie in a knot. Once you have tied that knot, you can trim off those threads. And then that is going to be our dart. So repeat on the other side and then we'll move on to the next step. If you're following along with the instructions, the next step is to press your darts, um, to press the stitch lines and then to press the darts towards the center back of the skirt. But before we head to the ironing board, we are going to go forward to the next step, which is step number seven. So six is the darts, seven is going to be connecting the skirt panels all together. So we want to have the center back and the back, obviously. And then you want to pay attention to which ones you put to each side. So because this is the back, that means that this is the right front that we're going to be connecting and grab your pattern piece and then we're going to line up those notches and pin that all into place since we want to sew from the waist down towards the hem we're going to put the pins on the correct side to make that happen and get those notches all lined up and then we're going to repeat this process on the other side to match the left front panel to the other side of the back pattern piece and then we will get everything lined up at the sewing machine to sew these seams together before we head to the ironing board and press the darts open we're going to press the side seams open and then we'll be ready to continue to the waistband. We are going to be stitching at 5 eighths of an inch so you can line up the edge of your skirt seam with that line. If you need to use a magnetic seam gauge, you can get that all lined up and get ready to go. We are going to back stitch at the top of these seams because we are going to be adding the waistband later and we do not want this seam opening up and stretching. I have done this three times or this is the third time and you need to back stitch to make sure this all stays together so that it makes putting on the waistband a lot easier. So just keep your seams lined up and we're just going to sew it five eighths of an inch. just coming to the end. We do not need to backstitch at the bottom because we're going to hem that. So just finish it out. Lift your needle and your presser foot. And we have one side of the skirt panel all sewn in. So repeat the process on the other side and then we will head to the ironing board. Now that we're back at the ironing board, we are going to press the darts and the seams all at the same time instead of stopping before we sew the sides. I like to try and maximize my time so if I can do a bunch of stuff at the sewing machine and then come to the ironing board and press and do a whole bunch of pressing at the same time. That's what I prefer to do. You, of course, are welcome to follow the instructions to the letter and press and then go back and press and then go back. But that's just not my personal preference. So that's how we are sewing today. Now first we are going to press the stitch lines and this is just part of it to set the stitch lines. So just press them. We're starting at the darts and I'm actually pressing my darts towards the center back line of the skirt at the same time. I don't see how you would do this differently because it's a dart and you sewed it together at an angle anyway. So we're just going to press those darts towards that center back 
These aren't very curvy darts, so I don't necessarily need my pressing ham, but I'm gonna just use it anyway. If you do not have a pressing ham, you can just roll a hand towel kind of into a log and use that to press. As always, make sure that it cools before you move it. That helps your fabric set in place. It's gonna help your stitches all set in place and everything will be happy and all lined up. And it'll hold up in the wash as an added bonus. So next we are going to be moving over to the seams and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just lay our seams flat. We are going to just press them to set them in place according to the instructions. And I usually don't do this. I usually just press the seams open, but we're gonna follow the instructions for this part. So once you have that pressed, you've pressed your stitch line, let it cool for a second. And then we are going to flip open our skirt and we are going to press that seam line open, the seam allowances open, because we need them to be nice and flat once we start attaching the waistband and we want them to just all fit nice and even in there. So just unfold your seam allowance and then just go down and press until you get the whole thing done. Be sure to let it cool and be careful. If you're using steam, it does get very hot. The fabric gets hot, everything's hot. Be careful that you don't burn yourself. And once you get one side done, repeat the entire process on the other side. And then we are done with these steps. Once you have pressed your darts and pressed open all of your seam allowances, you are ready to move on to the next step, which would be starting at number nine, which are the steps to put together the waistband and then attach it to the skirt. Now, one thing the pattern instructions do not mention is finishing your seam allowances. So if you have a fabric that ravels or if you're concerned about your seams coming undone, in the wash, then you can finish the inside seam with a finish of your choice. Now, I made a video about using a zigzag stitch to finish your seams, which you can totally do. That will work fine if you're using just kind of a basic cotton. You can also do a serge stitch if you have that on your machine or if you happen to have a serger. You do not have to do this. I did not do this in the other two skirts that I made. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna do it on this one. This fabric does not come undone. It is not raveling. It is a pretty stable plain weave cotton. So I'm not really stressing about that, but I just wanted to point that out in case it's something that matters to you. And it also depends on the type of fabric you're using. So you may want to finish these seams before moving on to the next step. Once you add the waistband and the hem, then it's too late to finish the seams, which is why I'm pointing it out now. So stay tuned for the next video, which will be waistbands. It'll be coming right up after this one. And it will be with a different skirt because I made it with a different fabric, but that will take you through all the steps. There's actually two waistband videos and you'll be able to be well on your way to sewing Simplicity 8133. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click like and subscribe to my channel so you never miss a stitch. And if you've got questions, leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Until we meet again, happy sewing!